Okay, so in our catch-up sessions, uh, people have requested we look at cross-hatching and mark-making. So I've put a few ideas together in this to give you an idea how you could try things out to build things up in your sketchbook as well with experimentation. Because obviously the more experimentation you do, the more marks you will gain for AO3. Okay, so rather than just showing you how to shade one object, I'm going to show you a range of experiments that you could try to develop your mark making skills, which you could then use on a drawing. Okay, so on the left here, we've got stippling, okay, which is basically um, using the point of your pencil or pen to create it. Scumbling, as you can see, is using circles, a circular motion to create uh, shading in your work. Then you've got gradual dark to light shading. Now with the smudging, there comes a little bit of a warning to just be careful. You can smudge and you can use uh, like one of the little um, stubs for a smudge tool. Uh, but just be really careful with smudging that you don't make it flat. What I've seen is a lot of people over smudging and they tend to end up with just like flat medium tone rather than dark to light shading. So if you do try smudging, do it sparingly uh, just to create maybe a soft look of a surface that you're, you know, texture that you're drawing, but just be really careful. And then at the bottom then, cross hatching is overlaying uh, lines on top of each other. The closer together they are, obviously the darker the tone will be on your cross hatching. The further away that you put the lines, then it gets lighter. But obviously you can still do dark to light tone, controlling how much pressure you put on the pencil when you're doing cross hatching. So on the right, we have different techniques of hatching and cross hatching, which you could try the different techniques to see how uh, they create tonal effects in your drawing um, you know, and keep those experiments in your sketchbook to talk about your experimentation and development in your work. Okay so just to remember it doesn't have to be just pencil you can try um, ways of using mixed media so you could draw uh, do different mark making on top of collages and mixed media work and I'll show you some examples of that in the following uh, Okay, so again on the right you have some uh, more ways of creating tone uh, Again, this moves on is, is slightly freer than the one I showed you on the previous page So you could think about how you could use say the continuous line for example would be good for the uh, trunk of a tree, uh, broken lines could be used in various tones for clouds in the sky, for example. Okay, doing the cross hatching in different directions to create different textures in your work. On the left is sort of a step by step guide of how you would add cross hatching to an object. Okay, so first of all, thinking again as you'd start any drawing a light outline, think about where you want the light areas to be. Think about how you're using the marks on the paper. So in number three, with the directional marks, if you look at the lines, they're following the shape of the apple, they're curved. Uh, so it would encourage you to do that. It would be odd to look at the apple if you've done very straight lines, because obviously we're talking about a sphere. So you need to ensure that when you're doing your cross hatching, the lines are following the shape of the object, not going across the way it would naturally look okay so your curves are following the shape of the apple even in the cross hatching so you'd work it in layers building up the layers in the darker areas they press harder with a pencil and the lines are closer together in the lighter areas the lines are further away and they press more lightly with a pencil to create the gradual tone in the cross hatching So as I mentioned, using paint and mixed media, you could think of having a base background where you've experimented with different materials. In this case, they've used bubble wrap uh, and 
sort of paint and rolled it into the background use a different tone then they've worked into that with pen you could work into it with pencil you could add collage so thinking about using more than one material when you're creating a piece of artwork to develop your skills in all of them don't forget to annotate these as you go along to write down what you're happy with what's gone well and what you would change and how you plan to develop it for future work so here are some examples of mixed media work and mark making relevant to some of the topics I know you've picked. So we've got the bird, you know, looking at nature. You've got um, references with hexagons in the background to sort of honeycombs and bees. So you could think about taking and exploring different things from shapes from nature and put them together in layers of mark making you know on the right we've got collage mark making painting and photography uh, worked into with some text used in an abstract way so if you're looking at portraiture which a lot of you have thinking about taking part of your drawing and how you could then develop it using different mark making paint techniques and mixed media work to develop your work in other materials to gain marks and develop the drawings that you've already done. Okay, so some mark making here specific to landscapes. These are slightly more abstract and free. Uh, using mark making in ink on the left and using paint on the right. Again, an example of how that could be recorded then in the sketchbook with annotation. Thinking about how you can use paint and different mark making techniques in paint, not just cross hatching and pencil. However, on the next slide, I'll show you how you can uh, use cross hatching for nature and landscapes in cross hatching okay so here we've got not just a landscape using cross hatching looking at the whole of the landscape area background middle ground foreground it's remember you know good to remember that you need to do detailed pieces of work for detailed things like trees flowers it could be buildings it could be boats so something that is a bit more close up and a little more detailed again in both these techniques you can see that they've used their marks further apart and lighter in tone to create the lighter uh, gradients and tones in the work and use their mark making darker by pressing harder and putting the lines closer together to create the darker and depth of tone in these landscapes. So I hope that's helpful and gives you a starting point in how you would use and develop mark making to gain marks in AO3. You know, don't be afraid to have a go. Even if it doesn't go the way you think, you're still going to gain marks for annotating what you feel has gone wrong and then, you know, learning from that to develop your work and produce a better outcome on the next piece of work. Again, email me if, with photographs of your work if you want advice on anything specific. I will try and do some examples of how you would uh, cross hatch an object to follow as well.